So in this example problem, I'm going to use the rally Ritz method to solve for assembly supported beam. So I'm in this example, I'm only going to do part A. Uh, part B is rather tedious, so I'm going to leave that to be an exercise that you can do on your own if you like. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to assume um, that if you see of x is going to be equal to this function here. Um, and then we can solve, we should be able to then solve for uh, uh, the unknown, which in this case would be A1 for our beam. Okay, so if we do that, um, so for part A, let's look at our, let's first check the boundary conditions of our problem. Okay, so let's say V, so V of X is zero is at a pin joint, all right, the displacement should be equal to zero at that point. So if we plug in x is equal to zero, we end up getting a times zero times zero minus l, which is just equal to zero. That matches up. At x is equal to l, uh, we should also get zero. All right. Um, so uh, so if we plug in x is equal to l, we end up getting zero as well. Okay, so this uh, function uh, does satisfy the initial boundary conditions for our problem. Um, so the second, um, the second part of our uh, of our problem asks us to determine um, um, asks us to our the second part for Rally Ritz method that we need to do is we need to determine um, we need to determine u, and we need to determine w, so we can determine pi, where pi is equal to the difference of u and w. So let's first solve for u. Um, so the strain energy u is going to be equal to one half integral from zero to l, e times i z times v double prime of x squared dx. Okay. So if we look at uh, so if we plug in our terms here, uh, E and I and Z are constant along the beam, so we can say that it's going to be equal to E I Z over 2, integral from 0 to L. Um, the second derivative of V of X, or V of X, or the first derivative of V of X would be equal to, um, sorry, let me rewrite, let me rewrite V of X here as being equal to A1 uh, x squared minus a1 xl. So v prime of x would be equal to 2a1 x minus a of l, and then v double prime of x would be equal to 2a1 minus 0, okay, or just 2a1. Um, so we're going to plug in 2a1 into our equation here. We need to square it and take the derivative with respect to x. If we do that, we'll end up getting that u should be equal to 2 e times i z, um, an integral of dx 0 to l. Um, so we end up getting just 2 e times i z times x for um, uh, times a times times. Uh, sorry, I forgot the a1 here, a1 squared. Okay, from L to z 0, so if you evaluate that, the bounds of our integral, we'll just get 2e i z times uh, a1 squared times L. Alright, so that's our value for u. Alright, and then, uh, ch -ch -ch. so then we can have to calculate our w, so we know that w is going to be is our equal to our integral from 0 to L of q of x v of x dx. In our case, q is a constant, um, and it's going along the negative y-axis, so we can write it as being 0 l minus q times v of x, which we can write as being a1 times x squared minus a1 lx dx. Okay, so uh, we can take out all of our, our constant, we can take out our constant uh, terms, um, our common constant terms, so we'll get w is going to be equal to minus q 
of A1 uh, Q1, Q times A1 integral from 0 to L of um, X squared minus uh, L LX um, dx. All right, so if we evaluate that integral, we get minus Q A1 times X cubed over 3 minus LX squared over 2. And we'll have to evaluate that from L to 0. Um, so if we do that, we'll end up getting minus Q A1 length cubed over 3 minus the length cubed over 2. So we'll end up getting minus Q times A1 um, times the length cubed over uh, 2 times the length cubed over 6 minus 3 times the length cubed over 6. Um, so that seems to be equal to negative length cubed over 6. So we'll get Q times A1 over 6 for our W times length cubed. Sorry. All right. So <clears throat> now we have u and now we have w. We can then go solve for pi. All right, so pi is going to be equal to the difference of u and w. All right, so um, in this case, uh, u is equal to 2eiz times a1 squared minus um, a1 squared times l minus Q times A1 L cubed over 6. Okay, we can then take the derivative of pi with respect to A1. Alright, and if we do that, <coughs> we'll end up getting, um, we can set that equal to 0. Um, and we'll end up getting, let's see here, 4 e to the iz. Um, a1 times L minus Q L cubed over 6. Okay, so if we if we move, uh, well, if we keep rearranging this, we'll get 4 e to the i z L times A1 is going to be equal to Q L cubed over 6. Um, if we rearrange this again, we'll get A1 is going to be equal to 1 over 4 e to the i z um, uh, times uh, Q L cubed over 6, which will simplify down, so there should be an, an L in the denominator here, and um, if we uh, rearrange this, we'll get Q L squared over 24 E to the I Z for our A1 term. All right, and then we have to plug A1 back into our VC of x term. So we'll end up getting QL squared over 24 e to the i z times x times x minus l for our equation of vc of x. Okay, So what you'll find out is if you look, check the textbook um, uh, and you check the appendix of the textbook, you won't get the, the this is not the exact VC of X function, um, but it is a, an okay approximation. If you um, go back and you use um, a, you go back and use the boundary conditions for part B of the problem, and you solve for uh, using those, um, you'll end up getting um, the correct. Uh, you'll end up getting the correct function for VC of X for a simply supported beam with an evenly distributed load.